Okay, since we've gotten into the Maxwell relations and you're also expected to do partial differentiation for your homework problems and the practice exam problems, I'd like to go ahead and do a little pin cast on partial derivatives. So from Cal 1, you may remember that if we differentiate the function y of x with respect to x, this means that we're taking the limit as x approaches 0 of the function y of x plus delta x. So this is some new position x that is an incremental change in x, right, the delta x, minus the function y of x over delta x. So what this gives us is the tangent line to any curve that is the function y of x. Now this has a single dependent variable x, so this is pretty straightforward, and we use this full derivative symbol d. What happens when we have multiple independent variables? You're, you've already seen many equations like this, PV equals NRT for the ideal gas law, for example. So we can write some functions for this. We can say that P equals NRT over V, and P is thus a function with the three independent variables in V and T. Or we could say that T is PV over NR, and T, the, the dependent variable, is a function of the three independent variables in P and V. Okay. So now we can define a partial derivative, and we'll use del to, to signify the, the partial derivative instead of the full derivative. So this is a lowercase delta in Greek letters. And so now we need more than one variable for our function y, so I've given an x and z. And we'll differentiate with respect to x. Anything that goes, we give this some brackets, and anything that's held constant goes outside the brackets. So in order to consider the variation of y with respect to x only, we need to hold z constant. If we have 10 other variables, all of them are constant, and they go in a little list outside of the brackets. Okay, So we differentiate with respect to one variable at a time. And this will be the same essential definition, that the limit as x approaches 0 of y of x plus this incremental change in x and z minus y of x and z over the change in x gives us the tangent line with respect to the x dimension of this 2D function. So let's do a couple simple partial derivatives of the ideal gas law. I'd like to remind you that you may always Google some tables of identities or pull out your calculus textbook and you can apply these to any these full derivative expressions and to a partial derivative by just holding the other things constant. Okay, so just as a reminder, if we have x to some power, when we take the first derivative, then we get whatever power times x to the power reduced by one. So for example, if I have x squared, the first derivative is 2x. If I have x cubed, then the first derivative is 3x squared. Okay. Then if I take the first derivative of some function that has x on the bottom, and I've thrown in a few constants just to let you see what might happen, you can apply those to, to this first identity that if we had x minus b over c or something, right, that it would do a similar process. So I have a constant c on top, and I'm shifting the position of x by a constant b, and it's to the a power, just like our first identity. And then I get a minus sign here, so we get a negative, this power a, we're still multiplying by that, that power, and then my argument, x minus b, remains the same, but now I increase by a power of 1. Okay, so this would get larger. Okay. So we'll see these in action. When I take the partial derivative with respect to t, notice that I must hold the other two dependent variables constant. So this means when we're differentiating with respect to pressure, we want this one, PV, p equals nRT over v. So we could write something that looks like this. Partial derivative with respect to t of the argument nRT over v. Since we're differentiating with respect to t, we simply get an r over v, okay, because we have t to the first power in the numerator. Similarly, if I want to differentiate the volume, okay, so I didn't have this one, I'll go ahead and write v equals nrt over p up here, with respect to the temperature, then I'm going to get the same expression 
but now with pressure on the bottom. Now, I would like to give an example of our second identity where I'll differentiate pressure with respect to volume. And of course, notice I'm still holding my other independent variables constant. So if I, are, if I take the partial derivative with respect to volume of the argument nRT over V, okay, then I will get minus nRT over v squared. We'll go ahead and box solutions real quick so they stand out. Okay, now let's look at something more complicated where we have more things. How about the van der Waals gas equation where the pressure is equal to nRT over v minus b, one of the van der Waals constants. Remember that this one is in units of concentration. And then we have some other van der Waals constant that's in atmospheres per concentration squared times n squared over v squared. So if I would like to differentiate this one with respect to temperature, then I'm going to go ahead and take a partial partial t, del del t, of nRT over v minus b minus a n squared over v squared. So you'll notice that we have no t in the second term. So this entire second term is going to go away in our solution. And we're only going to be left with the term that has t in it. So similar to what you saw above, because we have t to the first power on top and we're differentiating with respect to t, we're simply going to get n r over v minus b. Okay. Then let's also differentiate with respect to the number of moles. So the change in pressure with respect to the change in the number, number of particles of gas holding the volume and temperature constant. We can go ahead and rewrite this. I think it helps to start this way because if you want to start doing some multiple powers, second or third order partial derivatives, then it's easier to picture them. So this one has n in both terms, so we're going to be left with both terms. The first term will look similar to what we have in problem one from the van der Waals gas. So we'll have now the n is what goes away, so we'll have an RT over V minus B. And now we're going to apply that same identity, and now we have an n squared. So we're going to get 2n when we differentiate with respect to n for that second term. So we'll have a a times 2n over v squared. So this would be the partial derivative of the pressure with respect to the change in number of moles. Now I'd like to point out a little nifty trick that you can do to reduce the number of independent variables. You may consider reasonable ratios of things. So I will let this symbol v prime equal the volume over the number of moles. So this would be actually a new variable that's concentration. So we have variables in chemistry all the time that have multiple units. Then we have density, right, which would be a mass over volume. So concentration is another valid unit. So we may rewrite the entire van der Waals equation as RT over V prime minus B minus A over V prime. And I'll give it some brackets. Maybe I should do a V bar or like a star or something. <laughs> Let's change it to a V. I don't know if I like V star. Let's leave it prime. Because you have some definition of star as being your surroundings condition. So I don't want to confuse you. Okay. So now if I want to differentiate this expression with respect to that that complex variable, the concentration, I need only hold the temperature constant, right? Because V and N are both included in this one. So if we have this one on the bottom, we'll apply our second identity. And we're going to go ahead and get for this one, we'll square that term. So we have a minus RT over V prime minus B squared. And then because it's squared in the second term, we're going to have a minus 2 on top. But this is subtracted, so that becomes a plus 2a over v prime q 
cute. Okay. And then, of course, you may take second partial derivatives or cross derivatives. These would be where you take the, deriv the partial derivative twice with respect to the same independent variable for a second derivative. And we denote these things as, for example, this one that I just did, I may take the second derivative. Let's go ahead and give it a partial for posterity. So we'll say del squared p over del v prime squared. And this one still has constant temperature. So note that this is something that is equal to taking del del v prime of del p del v prime, both of these with the con respect to constant temperature. And so this, let's take our argument that we've already solved, del del v prime of minus RT over V prime minus B squared plus 2A over V prime cubed. And let's differentiate again. So we have, using our second rule, we have V minus B squared on the bottom, and so we need a negative 2 on top, so we'll get plus 2RT over V prime minus B now cubed. And the second term is going to become negative again. So we have a 3 right here. So we'll have a minus 3 on top. That's multiplied by this 2a. So totally we'll have minus 6a over v prime to the fourth power. And a cross derivative would be if we wanted to instead differentiate the second time with respect to some other dimension. So let's say that I want to take dp dt of dp, and I'm saying d, I should say del every time. The partial derivative of pressure with respect to temperature of the partial derivative of pressure with respect to the concentration. So this one would be with constant temperature, and this one would be with constant concentration. So this one, we'll go ahead and just, because we've already solved the, for the inner derivative, this, by the way, is called a cross derivative. We'll take the partial derivative with respect to temperature of this minus RT over V prime minus B squared plus 2A over V prime cubed. Now, like we saw before, let's see, where was it? Up here in equation one, we, we didn't have any temperature in the second term, so that term disappears from our solution because it's constant, it's all constants, right? So now we only have the first term left, and when we take the derivative, partial derivative with respect to temperature with a power of one, we simply remove it, so we get a minus r over d prime minus b squared for this cross derivative product. I hope that helps. Please feel free to post any questions that you have over this or, of course, any other topics. And I hope that this lets you do your homework and feel confident for the exam.